Right, welcome to your first revision lecture on IS12. Now, remember the purpose of these pages, summary revision pages. I've included majority of the important principles onto one or two pages per standard. Reason being, at the end of your CTA syllabus, you have quite a lot of things that you need to remember and that you need to study. Now, my recommendation, print out two copies. The first copy, you need to make your own. Therefore, when you do questions, you need to add principles that you tend to forget or which you have identified which is not on this page. The second copy, I want you to stick somewhere where you can view this every day. In the kitchen, in your room, when you brush your teeth, teeth when you make yourself some coffee, quickly scan through this. Remember, we need to focus on a long-term memory. Right. In terms of your long-term memory, if you scan through this page every single day, not reading the detail, guys, you will be able to remember the flow, the logic, some of these principles, and it will help you to decrease your actual study time. Now, when you ask around, you will identify that there is quite a few students who have actually used these pages when they wrote the ITC and when they write ABC. Therefore, it is important, please, you need to make this your own. Okay, now let's get back to IS12. I just want to take this out. I don't want to confuse you. When we look at IS12, you will identify on the page that I have included at the bottom left corner. Assessed losses, all of these principles we will cover in our second lecture. And then it is important for me that you need to identify right corner bottom. Presentation and disclosure, extremely important. I have included a separate recording for our full program students. Now, when we look at IS12, there's four key elements that you need to ensure that you understand and that you know. The first, we will look at what is our profit before tax, then our taxable profit, our current tax, and number four, our deferred tax. Remember, our income tax, income tax expense note, when we look at this, you will understand in detail, consists out of our current tax and our deferred tax. If we look at our current tax, we need to know what is your profit before tax. This will be your profit or loss in terms of your profit or loss statement in terms of your accounting rules. Our taxable profit will be your taxable profit in terms of your tax rules. But how do we get from our profit before tax, our accounting profit, to our taxable profit, our tax rules? The basic principle, you will have to take out your accounting rules and include your tax rules. Now I've included this as four reconciling items. When you look at the left side, four reconciling items. Number one, there might be expenses included in your profit and loss, which is allowed for accounting, but not for tax. An example, such as depreciation, this is included for accounting, but for tax purposes, we have our tax allowance. Therefore, we need to take out the depreciation and we need to include our tax allowance. You with me on this one? Second reconciling item, expenses not allowed for accounting, but allowed for tax. Income allowed for accounting, but not for tax. Income not allowed for accounting, however, allowed for tax. And we will look at basic examples of this. Right, then I want you to remember that in terms of IS 12 paragraph 81C, we will have to remember our tax rate reconciliation. Now, I will look at this in detail when I look at my presentation and disclosure recording. Okay, so when we look at this, we have now determined our taxable profit. Now, our taxable profit times our tax rate, which is 28%, will be our current tax expense. Therefore, this will then be our current tax, number three at the top. Now, our current tax, 
will be the amount that we will have to pay over to Sash. Therefore, this will be a current liability if this is a payable, remember. It can be an asset, but if it's a payable, current liability. Therefore, if you look at our journal entry, I'm still on the left side. We will have to debit our income tax and our profit and loss expenses increase on the debit side and credit our payable in our statement of financial position. Right, now let's move on to our deferred tax, number four, right side of the screen. Now, how do we calculate our deferred tax and what is deferred tax? Deferred tax will exist due to a future timing difference. Therefore, it's a future tax due to a timing difference. Now, why do we have a timing difference? Due to the fact that there's a difference in our accounting and our tax rules. And please remember that this will be included in your non-current assets or liabilities. Remember, current tax in your current tax liabilities or assets and deferred tax non-current because it's a future after 12 months remember current will be paid within 12 months non-current after 12 months right now how do we calculate our deferred tax when you look at our orange block our first step we need to determine our carrying amount now remember this will be in terms of your accounting rules your IRS rules Second step, we need to determine our tax base. Now, the tax base will be in terms of our tax rules. Therefore, carrying amount minus your tax base. Now, when we look at our tax base, I have divided this into four principles rules that you need to remember. The first rule is our tax base of an asset will be the amount deductible for tax purposes in future against any taxable economic benefits. Now, I make use of a formula. Look at this. Our tax base of our asset equal the amount that will be deductible in future. Therefore, a minus deductible and then an arrow for future. When we look at our tax base for a liability number two, it's the carrying amount less any amount that will be deductible for tax purposes in respect of that liability in future. Therefore, when you look at this, the tax base of your liability will be the carrying amount, counting rules, minus the amount that will be deductible in future. Rule number three, Tax base of revenue received in advance. Carrying amount less any amount that will not be deductible for tax purposes in future. Therefore, we look at the formula. Tax base, revenue received in advance. This will be the carrying amount minus the amount which will not, look at this, no, not be deductible in future. And rule number four, middle of your screen, if the economic benefits are not taxable, you need to read the information. Your tax base will be equal to your carrying amount. Right, now, your carrying amount minus your tax base will result in a temporary difference. Now, this temporary difference in terms of I is 12 can either be a taxable temporary difference or a deductible temporary difference. Now, when we look at our taxable temporary difference, this will be the carrying amount of your asset should exceed the tax base of your asset or the carrying amount of your liability is less than the tax base of your liability. Remember, guys, in the detailed recordings, I work through this step by step and I explain all of this. The purpose of this revision page is to summarize our important principles. Deferred tax liability will then exist, which will be an income tax payable in future. Your journal entry will be to debit your deferred tax in your profit or loss and credit 
your deferred tax in your statement of financial position because this will be a deferred tax liability which will exist. Right, your deductible temporary differences, carry amount of your asset is less than the tax base, carry amount of your liability exceeds the tax base and this will result in a deferred tax asset and this will be income tax recoverable in future. You will have to debit your deferred tax asset in your statement of financial position and credit your deferred tax in your profit and loss. Right, but extremely important, you need to remember, when you want to create a deferred tax asset, it is important that there has to be future economic benefits to be able to utilize, use the deferred tax asset. Therefore, the standard indicates to us that we may only recognize this asset if there is future economic benefits. Okay, therefore important that you need to read the scenarios. Then as always, a few exemptions to the rules. I is 12 paragraph 15 and paragraph 24. In the detail lectures, we do work through them. Right. Therefore, when there is a temporary difference, we have identified that this can result in a taxable temporary difference or a deductible temporary difference. And number three, exemptions. Now, let's have a look at number three, our exempt section. You guys, just quickly bear with me. You will remember prior years, and some of the universities still do this. When we look at land, the cost portion of our land, remember in terms of our deferred tax calculation, let's say for example, we have our carrying amount, it's 100,000. We have a tax base, temporary difference, deferred tax, right? Now, prior years, they've indicated that our tax base of land will be zero. And then our temporary difference, which is 100,000, will be exempt. Now, we've indicated that this is normally in terms of paragraph 15. But when we think about this, guys, land, this tax base will be the amount deductible in future. If you think about this, your tax base of your asset equals the amount deductible in future when we sell the land. Land will always have some kind of value, guys. Therefore, when we sell the land, this tax base will be 100,000. And then the temporary difference will be zero and our deferred tax will be zero. The effect is still the same. No deferred tax. But due to the fact that we will sell our land, guys, land will always have a value. It has to have some kind of value. We will have a temporary difference. Okay. Now, exempt, we have our admin building. Now, the cost portion of our admin building will be exempt. Then the standard indicates to us, in terms of our goodwill, our goodwill cannot create a deferred tax liability. Okay, so guys, an important paragraph that I want you to please remember and please ensure that you understand this. It's your IS 12, paragraph 51B and C. It indicates to us that when we look at our land, when our land is recognized based on our revaluation model, that revaluation surplus will be based on our CGT rate. Okay. When we look at our investment property and there is a fair value adjustment in terms of our fair value model, that fair value adjustment will be based on our CGT rate. Okay. Now, what does this actually mean? When you look at our orange block, remember we have identified that we need to determine our carrying amount, our tax base, our temporary difference, and then times this by our tax rate. Now, the tax rate will be based on the manner of recovery of that asset or liability. Therefore, if this is through sale, we will use our CGT rate. 
at this point of time, 80 times 28%, or if it is through use, we will use our 28%. Now, when we look at I is 12, paragraph 51, B or C, land, for example, remember, we have our carrying amount, our tax base, our temporary difference, and our deferred tax. We have land, let's say, for example, cost is 100,000. We've identified that the tax base will be 100,000, no temporary difference, no deferred tax. Now we have a residual value. We have revalued that land, let's say, by 20,000. Our tax base will be zero because this is a revaluation in terms of our accounting rules. Our temporary difference will be the 20,000 times 80% and this will be 16,000 and our deferred tax will then be times 28% and this is 4480. Now think about your journal entry. We will have to debit our land, credit our revaluation surplus and this will be in our OCI. Debit our revaluation surplus OCI and credit our deferred tax liability. Again, why will this be a deferred tax liability? If you look at our principles, our cost exceed our tax base amount, therefore this is a deferred tax liability, a taxable temporary difference of 4480. Extremely important, land, this is through our OCI. And then, guys, exactly the same in terms of our investment property. If our investment property is based on our fair value model, the fair value adjustment will be taxed based on our CGT rate. Right. Therefore, guys, how do we calculate our deferred tax? Carry amount minus tax base equals your temporary difference times the rate and this will be your deferred tax asset or liability.